we already spoke about glycolysis. In the process of glycolysis, glucose, which is a six carbon molecule, is broken down to give two molecules of a three carbon compound called pyruvate. And in the process, two molecules of ATP alongside two molecules of NADH2 are formed, which is then later used to make more ATP for the cell. Okay. Now, once this pyruvate has been produced, to move on to the next stage of aerobic respiration, this pyruvate needs to be transferred to the mitochondria. It needs to be transferred to the mitochondria, specifically the mitochondrial matrix. Pyruvate is oxidized as it transfers electrons and hydrogen to NAD+, our favorite electron carrier. And in this process, each molecule of 3-carbon pyruvate breaks down to a molecule of 2-carbon acetyl-CoA and a molecule of carbon dioxide. So from two molecules of pyruvate, we get two molecules of acetyl-CoA and two molecules of carbon dioxide. Now, if you can recall, carbon dioxide is one of the overall products of cellular respiration. And we ultimately release six molecules of carbon dioxide for every glucose molecules that enters respiration. Out of those six, two are made in this step. Talking about NADH2, it is used in the later stages of aerobic respiration to generate more ATP. But the most important product of this reaction is acetyl-CoA, which then moves on to the next step of cellular respiration, which is the Krebs cycle. Now, because the formation of acetyl-CoA from pyruvate links glycolysis to the next step of respiration, the Krebs cycle, this reaction is called as the link reaction. Anyways, so the link reaction basically forms acetyl-CoA from pyruvate alongside two molecules of carbon dioxide and this acetyl-CoA moves on to the Krebs cycle moves on to the Krebs cycle. Acetyl-CoA, which is formed in the link reaction, kickstarts the Krebs cycle. How? And to understand this, let's consider how one molecule of acetyl-CoA is going to react in the Krebs cycle. We already know that two molecules of acetyl-CoA were formed in the link reaction. So for two molecules of acetyl-CoA, we can always double down on the products. So what does this one molecule of acetyl-CoA do? It will combine with one molecule of a four carbon compound called oxaloacetate, which is already plenty, uh, present in plenty in the mitochondrial matrix. And on combining with oxaloacetate, acetyl-CoA will form a six carbon compound called citric acid. And citric acid is the first molecule of Krebs cycle. It is the first molecule formed during the Krebs cycle, which is why this uh, the Krebs cycle is also called as the citric acid cycle. It is also called as the citric acid cycle. And in the process of this cycle, citric acid gets oxidized. How? By giving up electrons, by giving up electrons and hydrogen to the famous electron carriers, NAD+, and something similar to NAD+, which is also called as FAD+. Okay? It gives up electrons and hydrogen to these electron carriers in a series actually of eight steps. In a series of eight steps. Also, in some of these steps, carbon dioxide is given out. In some of these steps, ATP is also given out. And another molecule which is very similar to ATP called as guanosine triphosphate, which um, also acts as an energy currency that is also given out. Okay, and as a result, what is formed? As a result of this oxidation, we get three molecules of NADH2, one molecule of FADH2, okay, two molecules of CO2, one molecule of ATP, and one molecule of GTP. And because it's the, the Krebs cycle is cyclical in nature, it goes in rounds and rounds, oxaloacetate is also generated, at, regenerated at the end of every cycle. Now remember, this is what we are getting from one molecule of acetyl-CoA. 
but we started off in, after the link reaction we had two molecules of acetyl coa so for two molecules of acetyl coa we are going to get of course two molecules of acetyl coa had recombined or had combined with two molecules of oxaloacetate so for two molecules of acetyl coa we will get six molecules of nadh2 two molecules of fadh2 four molecules of carbon dioxide two molecules of atp and two molecules of gtp so by the end of the krebs cycle apart from oxaloacetate being regenerated in the mitochondrial matrix we get these different products six molecules of nadh2 two fadh2 two atp two gtp and four co2 now just think about this by the end of the krebs cycle all the carbon dioxide that had to be given out during respiration which is six molecules of carbon dioxide per molecule of glucose is released because we had two molecules of carbon dioxide from the link reaction and four molecules we have from the krebs cycle okay four molecules we have from the krebs cycle so we have total of six molecules of carbon dioxide okay which also means because all the six molecules have been given out which also means that citric that the citric acid or in in the overall scheme of things glucose is completely oxidized by the end of the krebs cycle okay glucose is completely oxidized by the end of the krebs cycle because glucose formed pyruvate pyruvate formed acetyl coa from acetyl coa it combined with oxaloacetate and we got citric acid so and then it got oxidized so as a result of this whole scheme of things glucose got oxidized by the end of the krebs cycle okay great so the only thing that is now left to do is to transfer all of these electrons and hydrogens which are being carried in the form of nadh2 and fadh2 into the electron transport chain and through the electron transport chain these electrons and hydrogens are going to move to the different complexes and different enzymes of the electron transport chain to produce atp to produce atp